Shabbat Shalom, Mishvaka. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing this morning? This uh, lesson is going to be interesting um, today. We're going to um, interact on some things and discuss some things. Teacher, which commandment in Torah is greatest? And Yahushua said to him that you should love Yahweh, Yahuwah, your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang Torah and the prophets. On these two commandments do what? On these two commandments hang Torah and the prophets. So Nehemiah, man, I'm looking at this and I, I'm a Christian all my life. And I'm looking at this, it seemed like Jesus said, that there's only two commandments that we have to follow. Well, nah, he, he's saying that that is the foundation of every law that's in the Torah and every every command is given in the prophets. Wow. Okay. Let's let's sum it up. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good stuff. All right. So note that they hang on Torah. He didn't say replace Torah. He said that these commandments they hang on Torah. All right. Most Christians don't mind adhering to the Ten Commandments, even though they don't bother to keep even the Fourth Commandment concerning the Seventh Day. What is the Fourth Commandment? Keep the Sabbath holy. Keep the Sabbath holy. Now, now, how come we don't keep the? How come the majority of us in Christianity don't keep it? What happened? Good old Constantine. You mute. You mute. Constantine yeah. did that. What? What year did that happen? What year did Constantine put this? 325 AD. Say it again. 325 AD. All right. 321, 325 AD. There was an edict that he changed the law. He went in. This law that was given to Moses by Yah, a man went in and changed the word of Yah. Unbelievable. Give me a precept on that, Celine. Are you referring to Daniel 7, 725? Yes, sir. Summarize in your own words. Got you. Uh, so there's going to be a um, uh, de 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 deception to, to change the laws and, and uh, seasons and festivals. Precisely. Excellent. 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 So we see here that there was an agenda of man through Rome <laughs> to change the commandments. And they did just that. OK, which were a part of Torah. OK, man has always liked to pick and choose. Now, I'm going to say this. And I, I was in the barbershop for years and um, Taylor's brothers, which work at the barbershop. We would have major discussions. We would talk about church. We would talk about Christianity. And one thing needs to say to me all the time that, man, Stone, the Christianity that you win, it's like y'all pick and choose. You seem like y'all pick and choose, which and I will argue with them and debate with them. But I had to recently apologize and repent to them and tell them they were right, that the ministry of Christianity is picking and choose. For example, Christianity does not teach the laws, statutes, commits, or the feast days, but they do keep one. What feast days do they keep? It's tar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the man-made holiday. But what the law, the, the feast of Yahs, which one do they keep? Passover. Not at all. They don't keep that because they call it the Eucharist. They call that communion. Uh, which one do they keep out of the seven? Pentecost. Pentecost. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Now you keep that one out of all the laws, out of all the all the feasts out here. You got Passover, Pesach. You got the Maso, unleavened bread. You got first fruits. You got uh, Yom Terah, the Day of Trumpets. You got uh, the Day of Atonement. You got Sukkot. But that day is the day they choose to pick because they got they get to go in there where they white and run and shout and run up and down the speaking tongues and fall over the steps and stuff. But it, that's the pick and choose ministry. What? Why you choose that one and not none of the other ones? Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. But when it comes to Yahuwah's word, 
but it's time to realize the seventh day Sabbath command, along with his seven scripture feasts, were never abolished on the cross or anywhere else. There were parts of Torah that Yahuwah said would endure forever. What is that word in Hebrew? Forever, eternity. What's the word for that? What's the word for that? Olam. Come on, sir. Olam. That is a Hebrew word which means forever. Yah's word is forever. Remember, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. It says, I am Elohim. I do not change not. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. So I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, which means he does not change. Who changes? Man changes. Yah don't change. So when you change the word of Yah, you're making Yah to be a liar. Somebody's lying. Because the word says forever, eternity. Hmm, interesting. And the seventh day Sabbath and the script scriptorial feasts are among them. All right, so understand this. What did, Yah what did Yahushua do? Like Nehemiah said, when, when he told them that to hang those two commandments and to hang them on Torah, he was summarizing. Okay, so somebody give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Anybody, get that for me. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Mm -hmm. So somebody give me the first four commandments of the first four Ten Commandments. Somebody give me the first four. Anybody? I don't know. In, I don't know in the chronological order, but thou shalt not uh, kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not uh, uh, bear false witness. Is that the, the first four? I did the first four chronology in, in, in order. Yes, sir. Somebody get that. Google it. Whatever you got to do, give me the first four in order. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Okay. Thou shalt not make. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, Zakain. Say it, read that again, read it slowly. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Stop right there. Selene, read your verse. Again, Deuteronomy 6 and 5. Uh, and you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Zakane, read that again. Hey, this is not... This is uh, OJ. Yes. Yes. Zakane, you were elder. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. Read I, that again. I, I, I mean, I'm yet learning Hebrew. Yes, sir. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right. Okay. Now read the second one. The second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything. Stop there. Selene, read your verse again. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Thank you. Zadkain Stone, read the third one. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third, fourth generation of them that hate me. All right. Selene, read your verse again. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. All right. Read the next one, Zakain Stone. Wow. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Selene. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Okay. Now you see, now what now what is going on here? What's what, what was Yahushua doing? What was he quoting to them? He was quoting the commandments. Exactly. So he was doing what? He was summarizing. Mm -hmm. Summarizing those commandments into Deuteronomy 6 and 5. So read me. Um Go get me Leviticus 
chapter 19, verse 18. Yes. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And right, right I am there. Here. Stop right there. Okay. Someone read me the, 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 the last five of the Ten Commandments. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, and you shall not covet. Okay, it's, and read that, Nehemiah, read Leviticus 19, 18 for me again. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, what was, so what was he doing? Yahusha was summarizing the Ten Commandments in two verses. He wasn't saying, this is all you have to do, these two verses. He was summarizing. You see how the first five went with Deuteronomy 6 and 5, and the last five went with Leviticus 19 and 18? He was just summarizing. He wasn't telling us, oh, you just got two commandments. No, he put summarizing and all. Y'all see that? Does that make sense? So when anyone mm -hmm. tell you that, oh, we got to keep two commandments, you let them know that, no, Yahushua was summarizing the whole Ten Commandments in two verses, Deuteronomy 6 and 5 and Leviticus 19 and 18. If, if, if Yahushua was saying that we only got to obey two commandments, then we could go out there and kill people. We could go out here and commit adultery. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A lot of times in church and Christianity, we didn't use logical and critical thinking. No, there's no way in the world he was talking about all you got to do is do two commandments. These were summarizing these things. They did not, those two commandments did not replace the other eight, but they, hang, they hung on them. They hung on those commandments. Y'all get what I'm saying? Let's work, mm -hmm. y'all. Okay? So that's the first part. Now let's go to 2 Timothy 3.16. We're going to bring this out because we're going somewhere. We're going to let you know that Yahusha did not speak his own words, but he spoke Torah. All right, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture that was written by the spirit is profitable for instruction and for uh, decipher, reputation, for the, for the and for correction, and for deep, extensive learning and righteousness, that the man of Elohim may become perfect and complete in every work. Peter addresses Paul's writings in 2 Peter 3.16, Notice that the term letter, epistole, should not be confused with scripture, which is graphe. So understand Paul's letters that he was writing in there. Is this scripture? Or were they letters? Letters. Letters. They were letters. Why were they not scripture? Why are they not considered scripture? They were not part of the, the, Torah. the Torah. Say it again. They were not part of the Torah. All right. So when you say not part of the Torah and the prophets, meaning what? They were not. Yah breathed, spoken from Yah. The prophets, when they talked, they said Yah said. That's what they were speaking from. They were secretaries. Yah was speaking to them. Paul's teachers were letters. A lot of times, Paul put his own opinions in those letters, all right? So the New Testament generally uses scriptures, 1,124 for the Hebrew scriptures. The Old Testament, graphe, a writing scripture, okay? This is to be distinguished from its uses of the word letter in, um, in the concordance of 1992 of Epistolae, which is a letter, a dispatch. Primarily when the term scriptures is found in the New Testament, it is used in reference to the Old Testament. Here's facts. Now keep this facts. 52 times one can read the word scripture in the King James translation of the New Testament. And nearly every time it is referring only to the Old Testament. Let me read that again. 
Now, this is fact. Y'all write this down. 52 times one can read the word scriptures in the King James translation of the New Testament, and nearly every time it's referring only to the Old Testament. So please consider this. 2 Timothy 3.15, where Paul told Timothy from your childhood, yeah, you have known fast. You have to, the Holy Spirit. You have to look at this on the screen. Mobstone, please, please mute your phone. Mute your device. From child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in the Mashiach, Yahushua. Since the scriptures of which Paul spoke in this verse, obviously refer to the Old Testament. For the New Testament writers would not have been around when Timothy was a child. Then the scripture, Graphe, mentioned in verse 16, is only referring to the Old Testament. So what's Paul saying to Timothy? There's no way, you know what I'm saying? That could be, the New Testament could be scripture. He said, you have, from a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures. There's no way Timothy could have. This could have been, uh, the, the New Testament could be Graphe. Because he told him, Timothy, you have known the Holy Scriptures of a child. So the New Testament wasn't even cabal yet. Y'all see where I'm going with this? Yahushua, Peter, and Paul advised their followers to search and to study the scriptures. This was strictly the Old Testament volume record. The writings that men call the New Testament today were not even written. So when we look at the New Testament, they're not, we call scripture. It's called what? Letters. Letters. Hallelujah. All right. Help, help our brothers and sisters awake when we read the word to understand what's going on. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. All right. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah was initiated and dictated by Yah to Old Testament writers. All these men were no more than secretaries. They were secretaries taking dictation. New Testament writings were initiated by the human writers and they were expressions of their hearts to encourage and to teach their constituents. What's the word, honey? Say it for me. Constituents. constituents. Hallelujah. She got a, a doctor's degree, y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> However, as you mentioned, many did receive revelations from the Mosai and recorded it. Their words came from their own mouths and they were recorded by their aides who could write in Hebrew and in Greek. There is a difference. Hallelujah. All right. Just because you receive a revelation doesn't qualify it as scripture. Just because people, oh, I got a revelation well, from y'all, I got a word. But however, the revelation one receives should be supported by the scripture. If you got a revelation and ain't supported by no scripture, I want to question your revelation. Hallelujah. You got so many people, oh, I got a revelation. Well, if it's not have a foundation on the word, then I can't take what you say. You might ate some bad chicken and went to, and went to sleep and woke up and that came out of nowhere. It got to be matching or has to have a foundation in scripture for you to have a revelation. Brethren, I write no new commandments unto you, but an old commandment which ye have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning, 1 John 2 and 7. Yahushua did not speak his own words, but only the words of the Father. He spoke Torah. What did he speak? When he came on the earth, he wasn't making up no new doctrine. He wasn't just pulling stuff out the air. He spoke what, y'all? Torah. He spoke Torah. All right. Somebody give me St. John 7, 16 real quick. We going somewhere today. Yahushua went out here just making up stuff, just talking anything. He was speaking Torah. Who got John? 7.16. I do. Come on, Nehemiah. And Yeshua answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. Hold up. He said what? My doctrine is not mine. So what? when he was on earth, what, whose doctrine was he talking? His the father's. He, hey, what was his father's doctrine? The Torah. Come on, sir. Uh, Y'all making my heart happy today. Come on, let's work. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I commanded thee. All right? 
Some on St. John 12, 49. For I have not spoken on my own authority. When he was here on earth, he wasn't speaking his own authority. But the father who sent me has himself given me a commandment. What to say and what to think. Why do our brothers and sisters in Christianity think that when he, Jesus came here, as they call him, that he was giving us a new commandment? He was starting all over. When the word clearly says otherwise. How is that? Let's work, y'all. Let's work. As you can see, Yahusha and the writers of the books that comprise the New Testament did not intend for their writings to replace the rival or to rival the Tanakh or the Old Testament. When you apply historical criticism to the New Testament, it is without question that the New Testament was originally intended to be exhortation, encouragement. Come on, baby, read that to me again. Utilitary, pronounce the word for me. After a curtain. Yes, sir. That 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 uh doctor degree is is is, is paying his way today. <laughs> Responded to specific needs for early assemblies. It was only with the passage of more than a hundred years after Yahushua's death that early followers began to use the term New Testament to refer to the scriptures that the fledgling assembly was beginning to view as a single sacred unit. Again, Yahushua was not talking, he was talking his father's language many christians in order to show torah observant believers the error of their ways gleefully and with undertones of sarcasm break up the fact that no one can keep those 613 commandments now is that true Taha? can we not keep the 613 commandments of course we can how can we keep them did we, did we all did everybody did, did yahoo should keep all of them did he no, he didn't. Okay, he didn't, he didn't keep all. What? How come he didn't keep all of them? Because some of them were for women who are the menstrual cycle. Uh huh. And what else? Or pregnancy. Uh huh. What else? Or, or, or they were agricultural laws. Come on, come on. Work it. Come on, Nehemiah. Work today. Work today, sir. And sacrificial. Sacrificial. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so the commandments. Y'all should not able to keep them all. No, we're not. Some are for the temple. Some are for agriculture. Some are for women. Some are for the priests. So we can't keep them all, but guess what we can do? We can guard them. That word guard from the Hebrew is a word shamar, which means that Yahushua should guard it, the laws. He can't, we can't keep them all. It's impossible because it don't apply. It's situational. But we can guard the laws. Hallelujah. Great job, Nehemiah and Nate. So if that is hardly any of these Christians realized what the 613 commandments were in the first place, nor that no one, including Yahushua, has never did them all because most of them were for priests, as I stated. Some were only for men, while others were for women. Some were only for a certain point in time. Some were for Nazarite vows and 200 plus related to the temple, which is not standing today. Hallelujah. Yahushua said that men should not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. Now, this seems like a simple statement, but it actually points back to where Yahushua was quoting. Again, Yahushua quotes what? Torah. He quotes the word. Deut uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And he humbled them and suffered them to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did any fathers know. That he might take thee know that men don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of Yah, don't man live. Hallelujah. Where was Yahushua quoting for, from? Yahushua was quoting Torah because that is who he is. Somebody get St. John 1 and 1, and 1 for me. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Elohim, and Elohim was the word. And the word did what? Go down to verse what, 12 or 13? Uh, which, verse 13, which were born, born not of blood, nor, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. 
So in the beginning was what? The word? And the word was what? And the word was with Elohim. All right. And the word became what? It came flesh and did what? Oh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So in the beginning was the word. Who was the word? Who's became yeah, flesh and dwelt among us? Yeah, and he's the what? He is the word. The word. He is the walking what? Torah. He's the working, Torah. The walking Torah. Exactly. So that word in the beginning was the word. The word that was given to Moses was given in, in, um, in letters. But when Yahushua came, the word became flesh. So he became the walking Torah amongst us. So that's why he spoke only Torah, because he was what was spoken of in the beginning, walking among us. He became flesh. That word became, it got legs, it got arms. It began to walk. It got flesh and blood on it and began to walk it out. So why would he come preaching anything else but what he is? Are we working today? But let's dig deeper. What's, what was significant about Yahoo mentioned that man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word, Hebrew word, Debar. Debar is spelled with three Hebrew words or letters. The Dalet, the Bet, and the Resh. The Dalet represents the door. Come on, Brandon. This is your, this is your type of teaching right here. The Dalet represents the door. The Bet represents the house. Of course, the Resh represents the head or authority. This is understood as Yahushua being the door to which we are able to get to the house and live to have access to the head, which is Yahuwah. Y'all see that? You see how powerful that is? Delet bet resh. This is understood that Yahusha being the door. He's the door to which we are able to get to the house and live to have access to the head, which is Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Now, what was every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahuwah? And Elohim spake all these words, saying, every word that Yahuwah speaks and comes from his mouth is Torah. Instructions, teaching. That's what Torah means in a simpler version. It means instructions. So for someone to say that they aren't under the Torah or don't want to be compliant to Torah, that means whether they could comprehend it or not, that they don't know Yahuwah. And he doesn't know them either. In order for us to know Yahuwah for ourselves, <laughs> come on here, we must all come the same way. What is that way? We all must come by the way of the door, the dalet, to get in the house, the bed, to gain access to the head, which is the resh. And that is by the word, Torah, the word, Yahusha. Any other way is a thief and a robber. And that is just what religion is. It makes you think you are in the house. They make you think they're all right. We good. We don't have to keep no laws. We clap and swing with our robes on. Yeah, we good over here. But you came another way if you didn't come by that door. If you didn't come by that dialect to get into that house, to get to the rush, which is Yahuwah, you came another way, Doc. That means you're considered a thief. A thief. You came another way, a robber. You kicked the you kicked the back door in. You supposed to come in the front door. You didn't kick the window in. You came another way. You got to come by the door. There's only one way to do this, and that's you, Hahusha, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. You came another way. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. We getting this today, Brody, Brody. Let's read it. Matter of fact, um, Akati uh, Davis, read that for me. Verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Wait a minute, Akate, what is the other way again? What's the other way? Not by the front door. <laughs> the, the other way is, is, is through the doctrine of Christianity. Their way. That's not the, that's not the door. Keep on reading. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. 
Uh -huh. To him, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by Hallelujah. name and leadeth them out. Yes. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the uh -huh. sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, they but follow will flee the from him. The sheep follow him, his word. The sheep knows the word of the shepherd. They know when that, the wherever why, they may be. When that shepherd the calls The reason up why him, they recognize it is because it's Torah. Yes, absolute the word. They understand the words. The truth of the word Torah. They understand that. They follow the word. Then because the truth is in them, they recognize that Yahushua was the walking tour. So they identify with the word, which is the door, which is the dialect to the house, to the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope this is making sense. Okay. Now let's go to our, our second half of this lesson here. All right. We understand that Yahushua speaks Torah. We understand that Yahushua is the door. We understand that he had come when there's no, no new commandment. So come on, let's dive in. Let's dive in the second part. Some people think, seem to think that keeping the Torah is the goal of following Yahushua. But that is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says Yahushua is the goal of Torah. He's the goal. He's the telos, as it says in Greek. He's the goal of Torah. The Torah was given to lead us to Yahushua, not the other way around. Do we, do we just, just keep Torah as a way it means of salvation and throw away Yahushua? No, no. Huh? So Tor is the goat. It leads us to Yahusha. It guides us to Yahusha. The law brings us to Yahusha. The law, the, the, the law speaks of Yahusha. It points us first down, going forward, moving forward to Yahusha. That's the that's one of the jobs of Torah. Hallelujah. We know it's possible for someone to follow Torah. And not be following Yahusha. This happens all the time. Look at the Hebrew, some of our Hebrew roots. They don't believe in the Mashiach. Judaism. Them, them, them Europeans over there in the land, they still waiting for the Messiah to come. They don't believe in the Messiah. My, my brother, Nate, Nate Oliver had an interesting um, uh, conversation with someone that he called me up and I thought it was very interesting. That you know, somebody that was actually who they you know we call Jewish people who they claim to be Jewish, but she said she just recently accepted the Mashiach. So Yah is doing a great work across the world, he's waking people up. We on uh, Nate, you still there? Uh, Nate? Okay, but yeah, he, I'm here, my bad. I couldn't unmute myself. Could you just real quick in two minutes? Can you just tell us what happened in that encounter with her? Yes, sir. So, yeah, I went to uh, First Watch, I believe it was on Wednesday, and uh, I went there, had my Bible out and whatnot, and uh, she was uh, my waitress, so she looked down at my Bible, and she just asked, like, is that a Hebrew Is that a Hebrew Bible? And I was like, yeah, it is. You know, I've been studying the Old Testament, and, you know, for this past year, I've really been uh, really just trying to educate myself in that because, you know, I was in Christianity, and now I'm kind of, I'm moving away from it. So we really started talking and she's actually from, um, she's actually from Israel. She moved to Cleveland, uh, obviously years back and she went to Hebrew school for about eight or nine years. And she was basically telling me, you know, she just accepted uh, the Messiah mm. and she finds it funny that, you know, all these Christian churches, all they do is talk about the new Testament and the epistles. And she basically said like, they don't even know what they're talking about because they don't understand the old Testament. And then she also said that anyone in Christianity is in a false religion, essentially, because mm. you're serving a Hebrew God. He's the God of Israel. Mm. But then what she said was what threw me off, not really threw me off, but really let me know that I was doing the right thing is when she said, you know, um, a lot of people look at her and they don't think she's Jewish or Hebrew. But, you know, she has cousins that look like me or maybe a little bit lighter than I am. And then she also says that, you know, they have Hebrews in uh, Ethiopia, Asia, 
over in Europe, the Ashkenaz, Ashkenazis uh, up there. And then also she said, those are the people that are in Israel right now. And then she said, you know, I think there's also Hebrews that came here to America too, like on the <laughs> ships. So like, this is her saying this, not me. You know what I mean? So it, it just, it blessed me personally. Cause I'm like, wow, she really just came out and said all that. But yeah, it was a blessing. But essentially she said, you know, Christianity is, you're, you're serving a, a Hebrew God. So there is no Christianity. Mm, mm, mm. Now you hear this? Now this is someone that's from there. <laughs> that You see? But like I said, this happened all the time. But some of the people in Judaism, some of them, they don't believe in themselves, but some of them are waking up. Also, some of our brothers and sisters in the awakening. They don't believe in the, in the Mashiach. So, them. so we cannot conclude that following the Torah is the same as following Yahusha. It's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have to understand. Somebody give Matt, Matthew 19 and 17 for me. That was powerful, Ak, Nate. Powerful. Y'all hear, hear what y'all is doing right now? It's getting ridiculous. Y'all is waking up his people. Matthew, anybody, Matthew 19, 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one. That is, Yah. Mm -hmm. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Uh-oh, hold up. Let's read that last part, Nehemiah. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So he said, this is Yah who said, if you're going to keep going to life, eternal life, you got to what? Do what? You got to keep the commandments. Keep, keep the commandments. What is Revelation? Somebody give me Revelation 12 and 17. And somebody get me uh, Revelations 14 and 12. Revelation. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, the dra and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which, kept, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hmm. So the dragon was coming up the ones that kept the commandments and the faith in the Mashiach. Somebody get me Revelation 14, 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So, so what is that saying? In order to enter into life, to endure to the end, to make it to the kingdom, you got to. Keep the commandments. Torah is important. It's important. Having faith in the Mashiach is important. That's how we're going to make it. You see how Christianity has messed us up? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The Apostle Paul is a great example of this. He was trained in the Torah. He was a lawyer in, in, in Torah. Listen, I, and I, I'm going so far to say this. John and Peter and James and them, they weren't touching Paul, in the Torah, he was a Pharisee. Pharisees knew that law, frontwards and backwards. They weren't touching him in that Torah. He was a lawyer, held Torah down. He was trained in Torah by Gamaliel, and he followed it perfectly, yet he was fighting against Yahushua so much that Yahushua came down to meet him on the road of Damascus to stop him. Now listen, to meet, to, to now listen to how Paul describes his Torah keeping keep compared to knowing Yahusha as the Mashiach. Watch how he compares this. Somebody read this for me. Philippians right here on the screen. Taha, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that for me, sir. All right. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm more so circumcised than every day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me? <clears throat> These I have counted laws for the Mashiach. Uh, yet indeed, I also count all things for the excellence of the knowledge of the Mashiach. Yahushua, my Lord, uh, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Mashiach and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, 
but that which is through faith in Mashiach, the righteousness which is from Elohim by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of, of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So Paul said that he kept the law blamelessly, blamelessly, and yet he considered that rubbish, dung, doo-doo, feces, compared to knowing Yahusha. Many people in the Hebrew roots, Israelite community awakening, Messianic Judaism seem to think that they have reason to boast because of our Torah keeping. There are people claiming to be Hebrews or Israelites as if that somehow matters. Some, some of us think that because they keep the Sabbath and eat clean that they no longer need to seek Yahusha. Is that true? Can the law save us alone? Are we saved by the law? No. Mm -mm. Is our righteousness no. in the law alone? That's all we need. No. We got the Torah. No. We don't need the Masha. We, we go into the kingdom. Is that true? No. No. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You must go through that door. That Dalet. Come on, sir. To the Dalet. Which is greater? The Sabbath or Yahoo of the Sabbath? Which Yahoo is greater? Yahoo of the Sabbath. Yahoo. Which is greater? The law yeah. or the lawgiver? Lawgiver. Giver. All right. Some people seem to think that keeping the Torah is the same as following Yahusha. Sadly mistaken. However, this can't be true because the Torah came first to point us to Yahusha. Come on, Galatians 3.24. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to the Mashiach, that we might be justified by faith. So the law was our tutor. It was taking us. Back and see, people understand that Paul was quoting something that was going on in Rome. Back in those times, uh, a tutor or schoolmaster was called a rogue. And they were hired by, by people in Rome that were uh, that was well off. And they would hire these tutors or schoolmasters to take their children back and forth to school and make sure they got their lessons. That was their job. They were not the ones that were teaching the children, but they were the ones that was taking the kids and making sure they were disciplined and going back and forth to school. So is the law. That was the job of the law. The law's job is to lead us to the Mashiach. But after we, after the law took us there, is the law's job done? Is it over? We don't have to keep the law no more? Is that yes, the only job of the law? Was this to be the schoolmaster that said, oh, now that we be to, to Christ, it's over with. We don't need that law no more. Get out of here, law. Is that what he's saying? Not at all. No. There was more than one function of the law. The law was our barometer to show us sin. First John 3 and 4. It's our schoolmaster to lead us to the Mashiach as a barometer to us. We don't throw away the law after we go to the Mashiach. We still keep the law. We still uphold the law. Hallelujah. Come on, let's work. A lot of Christians will use that very verse and tell you that we don't need the law no more. It was a tutor. It had more than one job. One of his jobs was to lead us to the Mashiach. Hallelujah. Torah is important to us as we are instructed to follow it. However, is Torah all we need? No. If Torah is all we need, then there was no need for Yahushua to have come. If Torah is all we need, what was the purpose of him coming down here? We needed a redeemer. The law wasn't able to save us. We need somebody to save us. Somebody had to come to take the death decrees out of the law to save us and give us salvation. Let's be clear. No amount of Torah keeping will ever save you. We are not saved by keeping the Torah. You are saved by placing your faith in Yahusha while keeping Torah, as uh, chap read in Revelations 14 and 12. Hallelujah. Precepts, Galatians 2 and 21. I do not set aside the grace of Elohim, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Mashiach died in vain. If we were saved by the law, righteous came back, we wouldn't need him. Come on, let's get a receipt. Let's get a receipt. Is the law then against the promises of Elohim? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which would have given life, truly righteousness would have came by the law. Come on, Paul. Paul representing Romans. Chapter 3, verse 21, 22. But now the righteousness of Elohim apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets 
even the righteousness of Elohim through faith in Yahusha HaMashiach to all and on all who believe. So it's through the Mashiach that we're saved, not the law, not the law. So when they come telling you, because you all oh, y'all legalism, y'all walking in legalism, man. Y'all keeping that law, man. Y'all this and that, man. The law don't wait not. These scriptures uh, is, is, is ammunition for y'all. Pull these scriptures out. We're not saved by the law. The law is a barometer, but we keep the law. Where there's no law, there's no sin. Where there's no sin, there's, there's grace. We need a redeemer by Mashiach. We need a redeemer to come, but we have to keep the law. However, knowing that the law cannot save us does not give us permission to throw out the law. Yes, we are saved by faith in the son of Elohim, but we who are being saved are expected to walk according to the law. Romans 3 and 1. Do we make void the law through faith? Certainly not. God forbid. On the contrary, we do what? We establish the law. We hold that law up. We hope we keep it. We guard it. Hallelujah. For if thou believe Moses, you will believe me. For he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe on, on, on my words? What did Moses write? What was, what was Moses writing? Down, that was given to him on tablets. The what? The commandments. The law, the commandments. Yes. So if y'all believe on Moses, you're going to believe on me because he wrote about me. What you think he was writing about? He was writing about me. I'm, I'm him. I'm that guy. I'm that dude. And he was what he was writing about. It's me. I'm here in the flesh. Here. If you believe on Moses, you would believe on me. For he wrote about me. But if you not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Because I am Torah and I speak Torah. Notice there is a distinction between made between the words of Moses about Yahusha and the words of Yahusha. We must believe that Moses wrote about him, but we must also believe Yahusha's own words. Hallelujah. Now, many times when Yahusha would talk, he would say this. When he talked to them, when he felt like they had understanding of what he was saying, he would say, it is written. But when he felt like he had to correct something and their understanding wasn't sure of what he was speaking from the word, he said, you have heard it being said this way. But now I say unto you, what was he doing? He was correcting their understanding of the scriptures. So he said, you heard it this way, but now I say unto you. That was the purpose of him being that he was Torah. He came to establish what Torah really was. Because there was all kind of false teachings that was going on around during that time. People had a different understanding. So he had to make sure that they understand what Torah was and the correct understanding. Think about it this way. If you read a biography about someone, does that mean that you know that person? Everybody read a biography by Martin Luther King, right? At one point in time in school. Do, do you no. know Martin Luther King? Be that you read about him? No. No, you don't know him. You don't know him. No, you don't know him. You might know a lot about that person, but you cannot actually know him. The Torah helps us know about Yahushua. It helps us understand him because he is Torah. He's walking Torah. Torah made flesh. However, it's not a substitute for knowing him personally. We are called to have a relationship with him. He wants, us, he wants to hear his voice and follow him. Yahushua said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. The Bible says if we love him, we will obey his commandments. And if we do this, he will manifest himself to us. Y'all can read that precept later. That's uh, 1 John 14, 15 to 9 as a precept and as a receipt on that. When your Christian family and friends say to you that, oh, man, I, I don't do that Torah thing, man. That Old Testament, man, that Old Testament done away with, man. That, that thing done away with. Ask them, do they do that Jesus or Yahushua thing? If they say, yeah, I do the Jesus thing, politely ask them, do they know that Jesus did the Old Testament Torah thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, many of his quotes were directly from Torah or Old Testament. Then show them these scriptures of direct quotes of Yahusha and the Torah. Now, I'm going to send this um, to your emails. 
But I, there's a lot of scriptures in here that you can use as ammunition to prove that Yahusha spoke Torah. Listen, when 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 Hasatan came upon Yahusha, Yahusha wasn't just pulling stuff out of nowhere, out of the sky to say to him, he quoted what? He used the word. He used Torah against Hasatan. Uh, listen, Matthew 4 and 4, Luke 4 and 4. But the answer, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out the mouth of Elohim. Where is that found out? Find that. He was quoting what? Against Hasatan. He was quoting Torah. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. He wasn't just speaking anything. He didn't come. Listen, we read John 7, 16. I didn't come in no new commandments. He was speaking toward against the enemy. When the enemy comes up with us in our lives, it comes against us. Then we ought to speak what? To the, to the enemy. We ought to speak the word to him because he understands the word. We ought to speak Torah to the enemy. The foundation. Hallelujah. Another one. When, when Hasatan was coming. Look what he did. Matthew 4 and 7. You find it in the Old Testament, as they call it, in Torah. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. You see the trend? When Hasatan was coming up with him, he was speaking Torah against him. Matthew 4 and 10. Then you used to say to him, be gone, Satan, for it's written, you shall worship Yahuwah, your Elohim. Where you find that out? He was speaking what? He uh -huh. was speaking Torah again. <laughs> Costly. See, we ain't learned this in the church. Look, Matthew 5 and 21. Speaking Torah, Exodus 20, 13. Matthew 5 and 27. He was speaking Torah. <laughs> Matthew 5 and 31. About the Lord. He was speaking what? He was speaking Torah. <laughs> but they told us that, that that Torah is done away with, or the law is done away with. Matthew 5, 33. What was he speaking? He was uh -huh. speaking Torah. And it goes on and on and on. Whoever wants a copy of these slides, I'm going to give it to you. You didn't have this as ammunition. Yahusha did not destroy nothing. Now, we almost done. We got a good 15 more minutes. I'm going to let you go. Now, I, I, I have a question. Is, is Yahusha, was he on meds? No. Was he, was he crazy? No. no. Was he conflicting himself? Contradicting? No. Well, that's what we were taught. We were taught in the church that, that the law was done away with. That when Jesus, as we know, we were taught, they said that the law was done away with. But I just told y'all, it showed y'all for the last 45 minutes that he was speaking to her. Somebody, somebody ain't telling the truth, man. Something making sense here. As my brother uh, Nate says, let's make it make sense. Unfortunately, many believers tend to think that he is bipolar. Many pastors and well, many Christians interpret fulfill in Matthew 5 and 17. It means done away with. It's no longer applicable. It makes absolutely no sense in the light of the words of Yahusha in Matthew 5, 17 to 19, in which it is stated, nothing will change until heaven and earth disappears. Then Yahushua even goes on to list the consequences. If anyone practices and teaches any, even the least of the commandments are no longer applicable. applicable. Let's read. Somebody, let me, somebody read, I ain't calling on. Who, who's there at Kareem for me? Who ain't, who hasn't, I want to hear from everybody. Where my daughter at? Jackie, do you read for me? Yes. Um, so uh, we're starting at, let's read it, right? Yes. Okay. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Hold on. He I, came to do what? To fulfill. That means done away with, right? No. <laughs> okay. Keep reading. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth passes away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. 
Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So we choose the word fulfill in verse 17 to mean that the whole law of Yah is no longer going to be applicable to believers. Here's what we have. Yahoo's just saying. This is what he's saying in verse 17. We, we believe that I come not to destroy the law, but to make it no longer applicable. But until heaven and earth pass, every jot or tittle law still stands. Verse 19, even though the law of God is no longer going to be applicable, as stated in verse 17, anyone teaching that the whole law of Yah is no longer applicable will be least in the kingdom. Does that make sense? Is, is, does that make sense at all? No, no, especially when you read in Revelation where it said that um, he was coming after the children that kept the commandments. Absolutely. Absolutely. This right here is conflict. Though. It doesn't make a bit of sense. It doesn't make sense. We're not looking at there's words in here that is not in context to make you think that he's saying that the law is done away, but it's not. But if you look at the verses following that, you can clearly say, look, like, look, I could not destroy the law, but to make it no longer applicable. But until her earth and heaven pass away, every jot or tittle of the law still stands. That don't make sense. Even the law of Yah is no longer going to be applicable. <laughs> As stated in verse 17, anyone teaching that the whole law of Yah is no longer applicable will be least in the kingdom. That definition that many Christians use for fulfill, no longer applicable in verse 17, just doesn't seem to work, no matter how you slice it. This means that fulfill in Matthew 17, the Greek word plural or plural side must mean to fully pre preach or fully teach the law of Yah. It cannot teach that any part of the law of Yah is no longer applicable because it would it would then render verses 18 and 19 as irrelevant or even contradictory. It doesn't make sense. Obviously, Yahushua did not say in verse 17 that he intends to fulfill the whole law of Yah that is no longer applicable and then immediately proceed to tell us that it is applicable to us, at least until heaven and earth pass away. My goodness. This is the stuff that we were, were being taught. This is, it's contradictory. He could not be saying the law was done away with. Because that word fulfilled does not mean it's polero side or polero. Which means to fulfill, walk out to fulfill. To hold up. It doesn't make sense. And then as if it was not enough, then proceed in the next verse to say that there are eternal consequences to the believer for teaching and practicing that even the least of the commandments are no longer applicable. That will make Yahusha schizophrenic or bipolar. You see that? How would the law of Yah be removed and not be removed at the same time? And if the law of Yah was removed by him fulfilling it, then why would there be negative consequences, as it says there, in the 18th verse, that will result if someone teaches and practices that some of the commandments no longer apply. You see how crazy that sounds? Come on, let's work. Many feel that since Christ fulfilled the law, I don't have to. They believe that he has come to do away with it or do away from it. Fulfill, polero side, till all is fulfilled. Genitai, he, he is not telling us not to keep the law. He's not telling us that. Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but I come to fulfill. Plain as day. How are we to understand the statement? Did Christ mean to say, think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to abolish. His next statement is even clearer, y'all. For verily, 
I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. If I'm looking outside right now. We, is heaven and earth still out here? Honey, is heaven and earth still here? Okay, well, we're still here. It has to pass away. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Genocide, until it all be fulfilled. We still here, y'all. So we still here? And we're still walking on this earth? That, that means what? The law is still in progression mode. Still here. Oh, yeah, someone say, notice that Yahushua fulfilled the law. And then it was able to pass away. The King James translators did a grave disservice, y'all, in the translation of this particular passage. The Greek word translated fulfilled in verse 18 is not the same word as the Greek word for fulfilled in verse 17. Even the English reader can tell the plain difference between the two Greek words. The word in verse 17 is plerosai or plero, and the, and the word in verse 18 is genitai, which means to all is fulfilled. Verse 18 should be translated as this. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all come to pass. And since that has not happened, we're still here. The law is still in operation, guys. Now, I, I, hear, I hear somebody saying this. Well, well, if I'm going to be the least in the kingdom, that's okay as long as I make it in. I'll be the least. Because the Bible says right there that, you know, that I'll be the least in the kingdom if I'm not keeping the law. Is that what that means? We have to understand scripture. Because a lot of a lot of our people that still sleep will use that. Well, as long as I make it in, I'll be a street sleeper. I'll, I'll be a garbage man in the kingdom. As long as I'm there, just give me a little hut outside. You can have your mansion, but as long as I make it in, honey, I'm in here. But is that what that really means? Numbers chapter 15, verses 22 to 26. It says that those that did not know of the law were made to offer a sacrifice for unintentional sin. These people that's going to be in the kingdom as least are not people that are purposely or defiantly are not doing the law. These are people in, in the times of the Old Testament or the Tanakh, when somebody sinned unintentionally against the law, guess what? There was atonement that was made for their unintentional sin. Numbers 15, 21 to 30, not 31. But anyone who fends the commands defiantly, native born or stranger shall be cut off from his people. You see the categories there? <clears throat> there is there in, and so in Matthew is telling us people that it's going to keep the law shall be great and teach the law will be great. Then there's going to be ones that don't, they'll be leased. Then there's the ones that are going to be defiant who's not going to make it to the kingdom. They'll be cut off. Number one, those who pursue in obedience those who pursue in disobedience, that being out of ignorance, and then there's those who disobey out of defiance. Three categories of Matthew chapter five. Those in obedience, those that will be least out of ignorance, that's grandma and them. That's those people that even in the generation before us, great grandma and them that took you to church. Uh, 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 those that those of them that did not was not aware of the law. Those will be at least in the kingdom. It will be seem unjust to us from an unjust Yah for them to punish people that did not have an understanding of the law or what wasn't being taught then for them to go to hell. Does that make sense? That don't sound like a just God to me. But people who are doing it ignorantly, those that were teaching back in the old time in the 50s and 60s, there was an old mother in Zion that I grew up with called Mother Kerbo. They didn't know nothing about no law. But Daniel prophesied, he said, in the end time, in the end time, not it shall increase. Do you all believe that we're in the end time? You believe that knowledge is increasing? We got the Google. We got Safari. We got all kinds of devices and means to search the Internet for truth is there. Daniel saw this in his day. He saw that knowledge was going to be increased. So now we're out of, without an excuse now. Without an excuse. Y'all has raised up prophets that he's downloading information and trooping them 
in this end time to speak the truth. Prophets are being risen up. Truth assemblies are rising up. People are waking up now because they can go on the internet and you can search for yourself. But grandmama and them, they didn't have this. They didn't know this. They didn't know of this. They was teaching what they knew. They taught what they knew. Matthew, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. That word commandment there, how many, who knows what that word commandment, uh, that Greek word for commandment is? Who knows the Greek word for commandment? Because some people will try to catch you up. Well, we just got to keep the commandments. We didn't got to do that law stuff. That law is done when we just keep the commandments of Jesus. I'm keeping my 10 commandments or I'm keeping my two commandments. What do you say with that? That word commandments from the Greek is a word in tole. And you fact check me. Go in there and fact check me. But that word in tole in the Greek, it means uh, to, it's, it's like a, uh, a slang word or ethnic word for the law. That's what that is. So when people come and try to trip you up, well, listen, they'll say I didn't keep the law. They say I got to keep the commandments. But that word in tole in the Greek is, is a slang word for the law. Look it up. Fact check me. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Over 250 scriptures are direct quotes or illusions from the Tanakh. You can preach the gospel just using the Tanakh only. The New Testament was not compiled when they were preaching the gospel or the Basor. It wasn't compiled then. When Yahushua was talking about the cup of the covenant, he was talking about Jeremiah 31 and 31 and Ezekiel 36 and 27. You didn't need the New Testament to preach the Basor. First, second century believers preached out of the Tanakh. Three categories. There was the greatest. This is what Yahushua is talking about. The greatest, the least, and the defiant. The defiant ones are those that know the law. Who were the defiant ones, Brandon? Who were the defiant ones during the time of, of the Mashiach? Would that be the Pharisees? And that the would be the Pharisees. Right. That would be them. They were the ones because they knew the law. They had the law. They were Pharisees. They knew the law forwards and backwards. But these are the fight ones that were adding to the law. They didn't want to keep the law of Moses, but they wanted to add their own remix to the law, their own commandments, their own traditions. They were not keeping it at all. Now, here, here's a word here to break this down. Nate, this is for you. Now, that word fulfilled. And like I say, I, I can send these. Y'all going to need this. That word fulfill in the Greek, as we know, is polarosai. You see that number three. To carry into effect, bring to realization, realize, matters of duty to perform, execute. Polarosai. That word fulfill in Matthew 5 and 17, when they said that means it's done away with, that's the Greek word means polarosai. Let's go to the top. Lakayim. That's the Hebrew word for fulfill which means to uphold or establish. So he's saying, I came to fulfill. I didn't come to abolish. I came to fulfill. I came to uphold the Father's laws and commandments, not to abolish them. Verse 2, the male, that's Aramaic. What was Yahushua speaking in his day? He was speaking what? Aramaic. All right, which means to bring full clarity, full meaning. And understanding, he fulfilled, brought full meaning and complete understanding to the law, not done away with. And that word, genitai, when it means heaven, earth, that means until all is complete. Y'all got that? Y'all gonna need these files because when people come up on you, you gotta be able to give them that. When they tell you, because they're gonna come and tell you, like Jesus said, the laws are done away with. That's what he said. You got ammunition right here. You got it in Greek, you got it in Hebrew, you got it in Aramaic. Help our brothers and sisters understand that the law is still in effect. Help them understand that. 
through the word, through scholarship. Let's see. Now, here's some receipts. You got Now, you got the meanings of the words in Greek, in Hebrew. Now, let's see what the word says. That word, uh, pleurosi, in the scriptures. Same pleurosi used in the scriptures, Acts 3.18. But those things which Elohim before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Mashiach Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. That's right there in Acts 3.18. That's a precept. It's the same word that was used in Matthew 5. Pleurosa. Same word. Luke 24 and 44. And he said to them, these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. That word fulfilled right there is pleurosa which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Same word in the scriptures. You ask your brothers and sisters that said the law was done away with. Is this the same word, pleurosi? Yeah, that's the word pleurosi in Matthew 5. Does it mean done away with? Yeah, it means done away with. Okay, well, let's go to the scriptures. The same word. In the same word in these different scriptures, it means that he came to carry it out. Not to do away with. Some more precepts. Romans 15 and 13. Now, the Elohim of hope, Bill, plural side, same, same word here, there, fulfilled. It's the same word in Greek. You will all joy and peace in believing that you may bound in hope through the power of the Royal Congregation of the Holy Ghost. Paul saying that Elohim has come to end your joy or peace, to give you more joy and peace, to make your joy fulfilled or full. Hallelujah. Go back. There's another precept you can use. Colossians 1 and 25, where have I made a minister according to the dispensation of Elohim, which is given to me for you to fulfill? That word plural side, play room plural side, is right there. It's right there. So when they tell you he fulfilled it, he done away with it, you got all this ammunition to tell him no, sir, or no ma'am. Not at all. That's not what that means. That word genocide means what? Until what? Until heaven and earth pass away. Genocide. All right? I ain't going to go on with that because I feel like I, 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 I gave you a lot today. So before we go, let me ask you a question. What does the word fulfill mean in the Greek? Polarosai. Polarosai. What does it mean in the Hebrew? Carry out. What's the word in Hebrew? Lakayim. Lakayim. What's the word in Aramaic? This starts with a D. I don't know how to say it. Damale. 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 Now, did Yahushua come? Did he come to destroy the law? No, he came to demolish it. Carry out. To carry out. Exactly. Exactly. So when your brothers and sisters come to you and they, they come with Matthew 5 and 17 and Yahusha, did he speak his own words? No. He spoke the words that were written before. He spoke the words of the prophets and everything in the Torah. Out of the Torah. So he, he didn't come on the new doc. He wasn't making stuff up? No, sir. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. So he, he was teaching and preaching him, which is Torah, because he was the walking Torah, walking it out. 